There we go. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, right there. Oh, there you got it. Yeah, it's a chunky one for sure. If you cut it open, there's a license plate in there. Look at that freaking thing, dude. <laughs> It's a chunky one for sure. I don't like them dudes over there. He's so strong, bro. What are you doing? I had a long time. I'm much too tight. I don't want to click it anymore. I'll probably snap it off. Yeah. Oh, that's a tank. Isn't that a daisy? Five or six. Noise. <laughs> oh, that must feel good. Yep. <laughs> Back to the saddle again. <laughs> Which jig is that? Uh, black and uh, copper. Oh. Nice. Junkie bro. Oh, it's lightning. Nice size one. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you don't see them big dogs jump like that too often. Yeah, he's he's spry. Here, I'll hold the net, bro. Hook jaw. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Here, actually. That thing's sexy. You want to pull my rod? Yeah. Oh, you can see him? Jack Frost. Come here, son. Real pretty fresh. Holy kilowatts! All right, ladies and gents, want to take a quick break from the video to show you what's going on. Uh, uh, as you can see, we're throwing uh, mini jigs and minnows uh, on ultralight setups, and I'll show you the the rod I'm I'm using. Uh, this is a uh, Katana K4 
ultra light rod and it's designed for throwing mini jigs. Now, you don't have to have a rod that's designed to throw mini jigs. You can use any ultralight setup, but the length is very important. You gotta have at least something seven, six, or eight foot. And the reason being is casting distance because these little 32nd ounce mini jigs are extremely light. So they're hard to cast. Uh, once you get out in the water and working it back, that's that's half the battle. The, the, the main part is just getting a decent cast. So uh, if you have an ultralight uh, rod, usually something faster action, which means a little bit stiffer of a tip, and then a thousand series reel, the most important thing when you're throwing mini jigs is your line. And that's what's gonna help you get some distance. Uh, I have Phoenix Iron Feather Braid on here, four pound. Um, but right now it's, it's, you can't get it. They, 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 uh, for some reason, the manufacturer has some issue and you can't get this line. Uh, another alternative, uh, or especially if you're just starting out, is the uh, Iser line two pound smoke. Uh, it's, it seems to be stronger than most two pounds. It's very durable for a two pound line. And uh, it's inexpensive, and if you want to try mini jigging, it's easy line to find. Uh, throw it on your reel, and you'll be able to get decent casts with it. Now, the biggest thing uh, you'll see in this clip is uh, speed, just like drop shot. Um, you want to throw it out there, just do some light bounces, and uh, keep it very, very slow. The slower, the better. Sometimes you almost want it to, uh, to stand still in the water and just bounce. Uh, but unfortunately with gravity, it's eventually gonna find the bottom. So you're trying to keep it, that balance between getting snagged on the bottom and still keep it in the water column. Because the longer it's in the water column dancing around, the more chance you're gonna have to hook up a fish. Now next little thing, as you'll see in this clip, is uh, uh, I wanna talk about structure. And uh, where we're fishing at, at this place, uh, there's a lot of shallow water. Uh, it's, it's a lot of uh, uh, coves uh, and, and fingers for, for uh, boats so they can uh, dock up their boats right next to their house. Um, and there's not a lot of structure, but, but what you'll see here is I found some reeds and these reeds that are in the water are going to hold bait fish. And if it holds bait fish, uh, predatory fish like the trout and the bass are going to be close by. So it's always good to make a few casts around bushes and, and anything uh, sunken in the water uh, just beyond where you can't see into the water anymore because that's where your predator is going to be lurking and that's where I hope the trout are going to be at. Now in this clip, you'll see uh, I'm standing right by some reeds that I found and I'm going to throw out just as far as I can out into the shadow out there, hoping there's a trout. And uh, lo and behold, as you can see, uh, here comes one chasing my, chasing my devil tail in and right about there I hook him up. So um, uh, obviously sure sign, there's probably more than one. Uh, so I get this guy in and I'm going to keep fishing here and, and, and see what else I can get. So it's, it's always very important to, to look for any kind of story, fallen tree, some big rocks, uh, anything, because what will happen is the minnows will hide in those areas, then the predatory fish will be in the area trying to get at those minnows. And basically that's what it is. Well, even some of the trout will hide in there too from uh, bigger predators. But in this case, uh, uh, the trout are pretty good size uh, and, and they don't got to hide from anybody except for the, uh, uh, the minnows got to hide from them. So that's why they're there. All right, guys, uh, show you what I was using uh, out there when I caught that last fish. Uh, this is a devil tail uh, made by Golden State Fishing, uh, and this one's called, I believe, Green Pumpkin, and that's what they were hot on for in that last clip. Uh, but what I'm doing different is I'm using a 1 64th lead head. Like, normally I use a 32nd or a 16th, which is much bigger. Uh, I decided to go with a 64th um, because the weight of this bait itself uh, uh, and this small uh, lead head gives me enough weight in my mind that I can still make a decent cast, but this is going to have a little bit of buoyancy to it, and with a small lead head, I could work it back extra slow. So, and that's basically what I did. Um, so, I'll show you how I hook these on. Usually, I go right through the middle, so you have a color on each side, and I'll start at the the top most, most part of the uh, the devil tail in the thick part, and I'll work the hook in just to where it starts to go around the corner and then i'll pop it out through the bottom and slide it down and snug it up right against the top so there's a lot of hook coming out of there so when they bite it they're probably not going to be able to see that because it's moving and uh, i'm sure to get a good uh, a good hook hook set on them now these uh these 164th uh, uh lead heads i got are from a buddy of mine chris who uh uh started trout bit tackle and he makes basically uh, jig heads and, and ball heads so I'll put his uh, Instagram site here. Um, they're only available on Instagram, so give him a shout out. And uh, uh, he makes really, really nice stuff. He's have owner hooks and uh, his, his jigs are, are really, really good. So really impressed with him and I really love using this stuff. All right, so I hope that uh, clears a few, a few things up and answers some questions and uh, let's get back to the video.
And that devil tail again. Get out of them weeds. Yeah, fast masters. And they love that pumpkin devil tail. Yeah. He's making himself a mess. Make yeah. Make yeah. You think you wanted a picture? No pictures. There, I got your picture anyway. that big. Candy cane in the mouth. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. Uh, great times out of Silver Lakes. Uh, it's my second time there. Uh, but uh, uh, the only issue with it is it is a private community, so you have to know somebody to get to fish there. They have fishing passes and all that, but you have to have those on you, and they do have people to check. So, so don't go out there thinking you could uh, get away with fishing for a little bit. They have a lot of security. <laughs> Actually, they want to protect the fish for the residents. Uh, uh, but if you happen to know somebody, uh, uh, it's a great place to go check out. Uh, they also have lots of bass and uh, panfish and, and uh, all kinds of stuff in that lake. So it's, it's uh, pretty interesting, but it's, it's also interesting fishing kind of in the urban environment. It felt like you were fishing in a neighborhood, uh, especially for trout, you know, and uh, uh, being out here in Southern California, you don't, you don't get that feel very often. Maybe out in Florida, uh, that's more common, but uh, uh, out here, it's, it's, uh, it's a little unusual. So you probably heard in one of the clips, there's ice cream truck right there <laughs> driving by, uh, giving it all the kids ice cream. So it was, uh, it was interesting fishing for trout next to an ice cream truck. Uh, I've never done that before. But uh, biggest takeaway is uh, 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 looking, looking for trout. Like where, where do the trout go? And, and uh, they always go to coves um, and they'll go to structure if there's structure available, uh, like the reeds, like I showed earlier. Uh, reason being is that's where the food's gonna be. Uh, your smaller trout, that's a good place for them to hide. But again, that's where the minnows and, and uh, uh, other little crustaceans they'll eat and stuff are gonna be hiding in those reeds or in those coves in the shallower water. So they're gonna sit right beyond what I call the curtain in that just beyond where you can't see in the water anymore, that's usually where the trout are going to be swimming back and forth. Uh, so those are the places to check. Uh, anytime you're at a lake or wherever, uh, look for a cove. Uh, the trout are probably going to be circling in that cove. If, if you don't get any immediately, they'll probably come back around in about 15 or 20 minutes. They kind of swim in circles if there's no structure. If there's structure, focus on the structure. Weeds, rocks, fallen trees, drop-offs. That's where the fish are going to be because that's where they can ambush their prey. And with that, uh, if you want any of the uh, fine products I use on this channel, like the Golden State Fishing Minnows, the uh, RHA Spoons, the Waterland Sunglasses, or the Katana Rods, there's a QR code right up here. Uh, click that with your phone. It'll take you to a link tree, which will take you to all those sites. Um, uh, if you look in the comments of this video, or the uh, not the comments, the uh, <laughs> description of this video, I have all the hyperlinks, and uh, they all have discount codes, some up to 15% off. So check those out, follow the prompts, and uh, if you want to buy some of those products, it gets you a little discount, which always helps.
And coming up next, uh, you know, uh, I, well, I got the, actually this video come out, I will be at uh, Pyramid Lake, Nevada. So hopefully that's going well. We're also going to try and get into the Truckee River, go after some of the big browns. Uh, so hopefully that works out. And then after that, I am going to the mud hole, man. I haven't uh, been, and they just had that huge stock for Thanksgiving, and I got stuff, obviously, with the family, so I couldn't go to that. So uh, uh, hopefully I get out there, and, and uh, there's still some, some toads left over for me to hunt. <laughs> Uh, so we'll see, but uh, uh, a lot of local, all the uh, county lakes have now stocked. I know uh, Silverwood this week received 5,000 pounds of uh, Lawson, uh, so I'm going to go check that out as well. Uh, so there's there's lots of places to go. Uh, trout season is officially open. I, I, the only lakes I can think of that aren't open yet are uh, Wolford and uh, Dixon in San Diego County, but everything up here is, is got trout in it, so, uh, so go out there and get them. Uh, if you like what you see here, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe. If you have any uh, questions or comments, please uh, leave comments here or contact me on my Instagram at Spanker Outdoors. And until next time, I hope to see you out there in uh, tight lines. There we go. Oh, got the inchworm. Yeah, I knew as soon as I started messing with my face, thing would hit. Yeah. 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 Uh, I got tilapia. Uh, candy cane. Wait a second. That don't look like a trout. Dude, this is a freaking bluegill. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Look at the size of Oh, that's a red ear. Look at the size of that thing. There we go. Good lord. That was awesome. Gotta have proof of life. That's some kid out there with a snorkel. Two hours later. It's the biggest dogfish I've ever seen. Yeah, it's just right out of eye view. It's a Lahatan. <laughs> yeah, made it up here through the aqueduct somehow. Mm hmm. Yeah. What is that? It's a catfish. It's huge though. It's like an eight, nine pound catfish, dude. Catatcha <laughs> fish? Holy shit. Dude, no way. That's cool too. On a mini jig? Wow. Yeah. You got one of them bull sharks. Right in the lip, right in the yeah. lip, dude. Right in the nose. Bro. I bet you if you cut it open, there's a license plate in there. Yeah. Oh my. <sighs> I'm saying the 10. No, 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 no. You're right in there. Let me see if it settles down here. 10 6. Oh, it said 10 6 for a minute. 10 8. 10 8. 10 8? 10 6 and 10 8. Alright, we'll give him 10 8. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> There's like five pounds in his head. <laughs> He's got big old.